I know you will. Oh, Loretta, she's my barroom girl. Wears them sevens on her sleeve. Dances like a diamond shines. Tells me lies I love to believe. Her age is always 22. Her laughing eyes a hazel hue. Spends my money like waterfalls. Loves me like I want her to. Mike's Music Method. Hey guys, I am bringing you Loretta by Towns Van Zant, another fantastic town song. It's been requested several times and um, it's a song that I love. In fact, this whole Flying Shoes record is just a great record. There's really only one I don't like and it's the title track because he says Flying Shoes like 700 times in the song. But it's a great record and this is a great song from that record. Beautiful picking. Just, you know, a G shape, moving that around, simple chords, but really pretty right hand stuff. Nothing very difficult. So this is a kind of moderate level finger picking tune. It doesn't get too crazy. So it's actually a pretty good one if you're just getting into the world of Travis picking. There is no capo. Again, just a G shape, some C chords, an occasional D in there, GCD for the most part. And that's it. I don't have too much to say. It's a great song. Let's just dive in and do it. Loretta, Towns Van Zandt. Measure one, just a G chord. All you need is your ring finger on the third fret of the sixth string. I start by pinching six and two, and I'm using my middle and my thumb. And I'm doing thumb on fourth string and then immediately hitting the third string with my index. So pinch six, two. Thumb on four, index on three. And the, the, the timing is one, two, and one, two, and. Then the measure ends, three and four. And I'm just hitting sixth string, second string with my middle, and then the fourth string with my thumb. So like all Travis picking, right, we're just going in between thumb on six, thumb on four for the most part. One, two, and three, and four. Pinch. Four, three, six, two, four. Pinch six and two. Four, three, six, two, four. Measure two, we have the classic folk trick on the guitar. Paul Simon, Dylan, Towns, Prine, everybody does this trick. It's a great one. So we have a, uh, we're coming from that G and we play a C chord, but we keep the G in the bass. So all we're doing, we're keeping that ring finger there. And then I'm putting these two down as if I'm playing a C chord, but my ring finger stays on that sixth string. So it's, I'm not playing the fifth string, right? Because we're going to skip over it. So it's a C chord, but that, we don't have a C there. We have a G in the bass instead. So it's a slash chord, if you see in my tab, C slash G. And we're going to hammer from that G chord. And I hammer both of them. I, I don't show that on the tab because it, it, it's hard to write that into a tab. I can't even really do it unless I'm handwriting it. But we're gonna hammer these two down. I'm pinching six and two. Even though I'm not playing the fourth string, I'm still gonna hammer that finger and get it ready. Because I'm playing it immediately afterwards. And to stagger it, there's really not much benefit to that. So just hammer them together. Easier to do, sounds the same. So pinching six and two, hammering both of them. Then my thumb's on the fourth string, sounding that second fret now. And then I go right back to a G chord. I lift up those fingers, I pinch six and two, and then four alone. So that whole measure, hammer it down, lift it up. So measure one and two together. We go right back to the C slash G chord by hammering. It starts very similar. So I'm pinching six and two, hammering from that G into that C chord. Then it's four, three. So that's the top of it. Pinch six, two, four, three. And then we continue by doing six, two, four. And then you put your pinky down on the third fret of the first string and get that as your final note. So the second half of the measure, six, two, four, one. And the pinky's down on the third fret when you play one. Six, two, four, one. Thumb, middle, thumb, middle. Or I suppose you could do thumb, index, thumb, middle. 
it, it's not super quick, so I wouldn't be too picky about what you're doing with the right hand here. But the whole measure. Yeah, a lot going on. Really pretty and big full C slash G chord. Measure four is nice and sparse. I keep that G slash C chord down, and I'm just doing six to four. Right, my middle finger is still down there. Six, four, and then I lift all those fingers, and I pinch six and two. So it's a regular G chord again, and the fourth string alone on the thumb. So that whole measure. Pretty easy. Construction noise, deal with it. You're doing it halfway through the intro, but actually you're 90% of the way through, because five through eight is nearly identical to one through four. Um, five is the same as one. Here it's almost the same, but you add an extra third string right there with your index finger. Hammer, thumb, and. And then when you lift the G chord, instead of being a pinch, it's thumb and thumb. Six, two, four. Again, subtle. You really could just repeat these measures. The ending's a little different. You don't have to get this nuance, but when I was listening to the recording, I was hearing this slight variation. In measure seven, almost identical to three, I'm hammering into that chord. That's it, I'm not playing an and at the end there. I'm just ending on that thumb. I'm not doing that high pinky one. Because he delays it and saves it here for measure eight where the pinky goes down, pinch. And then the fourth string, six and one pinch. And then you lift the two G chords, six and two pinch. Thumb alone. So I'm not gonna explain every detail there because it's pretty much the same. I think you guys get it. Work through it, you'll do it. Nine and 10, we got a little bit of relaxing breathing room on a G chord, we're pinching six and two. Four, three, six, two, four, pinch six and two. Four, three, six, two, four, and that's it. So pinch, four, three, six, two, four. I'm doing thumb and middle, thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb, thumb, middle, thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb. And that takes you through the whole intro and on to the verse. Great news, y'all. The verse is identical to the first four measures. We're just going to sing to it. So I'll give you a demo of me singing along with the verse here. But again, it's just the same as the intro. So let's jump. Again, tabs are all free to download. Mike'sMusicMethod.com. Nothing is behind a paywall. And I'm giving you guys this content. So if you're getting value from these videos, please consider giving some back. You can set up a monthly subscription or a one-time thing. Maybe it's worth 50 bucks a month to you, 100 bucks. Maybe it's worth 10 bucks a month, five bucks. But just know that you're, you know, giving me time to make more of these videos. I want to tackle the whole Towns Van Zandt catalog, tackle a bunch of Prine, a bunch of Hurt, and whatever else you guys request. Um, so that money goes a long way in helping me do that. But it's not just giving me money, but you're giving everyone with access to the internet a free finger picking education. So keep that in mind. Every dollar you give here is potentially another video that hundreds of people, thousands of people can learn finger picking from. So consider it and, and help out and we'll do more songs. So you downloaded your tab and we're on measure 11. We're gonna sing a bit of it here. Three, four. Loretta, she, Loretta, she's my ballroom girl. Wears them sevens on her sleeve. Dances like a diamond shines Tells me lies I love to believe And I talk about this in a lot of videos, certainly the previous few. Just go slow. Go as slow as you have to go. When you're singing to something, it's almost like learning all the finger picking. Like you need to be slow and deliberate and go bit by bit. And that might look like this. Loretta, she's my Loretta, she's my ballroom girl. Whatever it takes for you to match the lyrics with your picking and which beats you're on and give your, give your, give your brain the time to process all this stuff. It doesn't just come. It's not like I just pick up the guitar and start doing that. You kind of have to be deliberate and slowly piece it together. So one more time. Loretta, she's my ballroom girl. Wears them sevens on her sleeve Dances like 
like a diamond shines Tells me lies I love to believe Again, go as slow as you have to, measure by measure, and eventually you'll get there. You will, I know you will. I know you will. Time for the pitch. If you're here, you're, you're clearly getting value from these videos and please consider giving some back, the value for value model. I could be putting these songs behind a paywall and make you become a member to access this content, but I don't wanna do that. I know some people can't afford the content and so I'm making it free for everyone. People who can't afford it, a young kid who doesn't even have a job, 14 years old, he wants to learn how to finger pick, young, then anyone can access this content. But please, if you're getting value, just give some back. That's all that I ask. Maybe that's 50 bucks a month, 20 bucks a month. Maybe it's a one-time donation, whatever it is. But consider that support. I want to do more songs, so buy me the time so I can... I'd love for this to be my day job. You know, right now I'm doing it in free time and like trying to find hours to get these songs in where if you guys, you know, donate and chip in, then I can, you know, maybe one day even not have a day job and just do this for a living. But either way, you, you understand what I'm saying. I want to make more of these videos and I need you guys to buy me a little time. And not only, always remember this, not only are you getting, it, it, not only are you getting the song, right? By you chipping in a few bucks gives me more time. And because I don't have anything behind a paywall, your donation is like a charitable deed. Because now, by you giving a few bucks, you've just opened the door for, for thousands, tens of thousands of people to get access to what I think is excellent content. I don't want to toot my own horn, but I feel like there are very few people doing these, you know, outlaw country Delta blues tunes in, in such a detailed and accurate way and, and I hope exciting and motivational way as I am. So I, I won't toot my own horn anymore, but you know what I'm saying. I feel like I'm providing you guys with, with good content and now I'm being redundant. Please consider the value for value model. All right, let's keep going though. Here in the recording, things start getting a little bit tricky because there's multiple guitars, the production is big. So I don't know exactly what Towns' guitar is doing. And I, I don't even know if the other one's a session player or if they're both, both Towns. If someone knows, comment below. I haven't like dug in and looked into it. So I, I'm trying to hear, just listen to the one guitar, but again, it can be hard to tell. So if it doesn't sound exact to the recording, to, to your ear, like just keep in mind, I might accidentally be mixing a second guitar part or you're mixing a second guitar part into your head. But I tried my best to take the notes that mattered, you know, we're standing out the most and put them together here. So this is a cool measure. It's, I don't know, this is kind of like a D7 with an A in the bass, but you also have the E in there, so it makes it like a nine. Um, but here, we'll, we'll play it. So all you need is first fret, second string, and then the second fret, third string. So that's it, open, one, two, open, open. I'm hearing that implying like a, a D chord, but it doesn't matter. We have the thumbs doing open, open from five to four. So we have five, four, and, and that and is my pointer on the third string. Five, four, three, five, two. Then I'm playing the second string with my middle finger. So thumb, thumb, third, thumb, second, thumb, and then first string open. So it's a lot there, we got thumb, thumb, third, thumb, second, thumb, first. colorful and strange for towns. It's definitely an out of the ordinary moment. Two measures of that. One more time real slow. I'll say the string names. Five, four, three, five, two, five, one. So you have that like nice ascending melody line on top. Third string, second, first, with just this under it. Third, second, first. I'll be honest here, the more I listen to that D7 chord in measure 15, the less I like it. Again, I'm a little confused on exactly what the one guitar is doing. So take a look in the tab and we jump to measure 30. Here's an alternative version that happens in the song on that chord when it's like the instrumental part and he's not singing to it. It's really pretty and I would probably just substitute this every time. I kept the other one in there because 
I, I'm pretty sure it's happening, but this one's way prettier. So if we're on measure 30, check out this. Again, we're going to replace tw that measure 30 instead of playing 15 and 16. And you can, you can do it every time, not just for this instrumental part. I think it sounds a little better. A lot better, actually. And there's this cool shape you've probably seen before. It's a C chord, but you're moving it up two frets. So you get this D chord, but you got the G in there, right, and the 11 and the E in there, which is the 9. And it just sounds really dreamy and cool. Too much of that dreaminess I don't like, but a well-placed dreamy chord is awesome. So let's do this. Thumb is just hopping back and forth between 5 and 4 the entire time. And we have 5, 4, 3 with the index. 5, 4, 3, 5, 2. the same. Five, four, three, five, two, four, three. With the fingers, thumb, thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, thumb, pointer, thumb, thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, thumb, pointer, and then to the C. So that to me is a way prettier way to do it. And maybe you should just ignore the previous measure. But again, I'm nuts. I get obsessed with the accuracy of these things. I apologize if I'm too anal, but I don't apologize because that's why you're here at Mike's Music Method and not somewhere else. Measure 17, we're hammering on a C chord, just the third finger this time, the ring finger. So I'm doing the fifth string open, hammering onto the third fret. So that we got that hammer, then thumb on four, and then pointer finger on second. Five, four, two, hammer the five, four, two. And then we go to the G in the bass, and I'm moving my ring finger here up to the sixth string, and I'm doing six, one, that's sounding open. Six, one, four, two. And I'm doing thumb middle, thumb on the fourth, and then index finger on the second. And if we put those together, we have this, three, four, And again, a lot of guys just prepare the chord beforehand by putting their pinky there. In this context, you can do it, but then you're kind of stuck hammering the pinky. And I tend to, I, I'm, not pra I'm not used to practicing it like that because I'm lazy with that ring finger and I let it cover that string because I often strum that chord. <laughs> so if you're gonna do it like this, you really gotta bend your fingers so it's only the fingertips and get a hammer on with your pinky. So I don't recommend it. I recommend hammering with the ring and then moving the ring. Measure 18, we have that C chord, and we're just playing five to four with your thumb. Then we go to a G chord, and we move to that G chord, we're pinching, it's like a big sound. I'm pinching six, two, and three. So it's thumb, middle, index, all at the same time. And then thumb alone on four. So that whole measure, pinch. Five, four, pinch six, two, three. Let's go right in the next measure. It's just a G. So we stay on that G and it's six, three, four, two, six, three, four. Thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb, index, thumb. 19. We go back to the C chord with the G in the bass. We pinch six and two, or sorry, six, yeah, six and two. Six, two, and then it's four, three. Six, two is thumb, middle. second half is we lift those two fingers in the left hand and we go to a G chord and it's just six two four thumb middle thumb so that whole measure and be careful again always very careful of when you're lifting that left hand so my chords down I'm lifting there I'm exaggerating the left right I don't want you to lift that much but that's the idea get that legato as possible. My kind of first instinct is to lift it then when you change the chord. But you want to hold it down a little longer right before you play that second string. Well, look out here. In this measure, things get very interesting. We break our conventional Travis picking pattern. 
Again, a lot of guitars. There's at least two acoustic guitars in this song. Not at least, two. Uh, and there's, so there's a lot happening in the production. This line definitely stands out the most. It might be the second guitar, but it is pretty darn clear this is what's happening. So the beginning of measure 21, and, and pay attention, if you just printed out the tab, look underneath the tab, like right underneath the numbers, and you'll see wh when the two bars are connected, it's an eighth note. So again, go to mikesmusicmethod.com, download the tab. And so the first four notes are eighth notes. So let's, let's look at this together. So it's one and two and, they're all quick. And now there's a couple of ways to finger this. I did do a few years of classical picking and I'm obsessed, I was obsessed for a while with Leonard Cohen. So I'm comfortable using my ring finger. A lot of you players might not be. So let me show you the ring finger way and then a different way. I'm doing this, I have that C slash G chord. I'm doing thumb, index, middle, ring. Six, four, three, two, six, four, three, two. So I'm using all of those. If you're not comfortable with the ring finger and you don't want to climb that mountain right now, that's okay. You can just do thumb, thumb, index, middle. But remember, it's not Travis picking because we just have that total break there, right? It's not a walking bass on one and two. We have one and, but then we don't have our thumb here. We continue just an ascending arpeggio of the chord. But then the second half of the measure is Travis picking. It's thumb and thumb. Six, three, four, six, three, four. So our rhythm is one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. So we have the ascending run, one and two and, and then back to Travis picking, which is six, three, it's gonna throw you off, especially when you're singing, so it's gonna take some practice getting used to that. And then we go right into measure 22, and a similar thing is happening. We have the same chord, we're pinching, six and two. Then it's four, two. So there's our Travis picking again. Pinch six, two, four, two, right on that C slash G chord. Then we lift it up to a G chord, and here we do the ascending arpeggio run. Twenty-two. Kind of showing both ways with all the fingers. First the thumb, thumb, next middle. Let's put those two together, 21 and 22, so you can kind of hear it. Three, four, run. Travis, Travis. Three and 24 are nearly identical, but a little variation here. We have that C slash G run through it, the ascending arpeggio. And then the Travis is six, four, two. So six, four, two, thumb, thumb, middle. Then the next measure, 24, stay on that chord. It's six, two, four, thumb, middle, thumb. And then back to that arpeggio on the G. four of those together from 21, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, one, two, and three, and four, and. So close, we're this close. Let's keep going here. We're on measure 25, similar concept, C, sh C, C slash G, I can never say that. My tongue gets in the way. We start with the ascending run, and then it's six, four, and six, four, two, I mean six, four, two. Easy ending thumb, thumb, middle. So the arpeggio, thumb, thumb, middle. Then we hang out on the Travis for measure 26, and it's thumb, thumb, and, so six, four, two again. And then it's just thumb, thumb, but it's open. We lift the middle finger to go to that G chord again. So 25 and 26, three, four. Thumb, thumb, and thumb, thumb, and thumb, thumb. So you only have the arpeggio at the beginning and then the other three parts are Travis picked. 
right to Travis. It stays in Travis. And I should explain, when I when I say Travis picking, I'm sure people define this differently, but in my mind, it's, uh, when I'm saying it, I just mean that the thumb is doing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And, and that's kind of, to me, defines Travis, at least the way I'm speaking about it here. Let's keep going, because that wasn't so bad. We got the last two measures here, 27 and 28, and look how easy it is. We're just transitioning back into the verse. And we have a G, and all it is is thumb on six, thumb on four, and and on the third string. So thumb, thumb, and that repeats. Six, four, three, six, four, three, just on a G chord. Does that four times. And guess what? That's it. No. We'll put it all together, do some slow run-throughs, talking about the singing and the format in a moment. But I want to give you a little bonus moment here, a little bonus section. Uh, it's not really a guitar solo, but during the instrumental section, there's this fill that just, it's so beautiful I couldn't pass it up. So jump to measure 32 in the tab, and we have this. It's just really pretty cool picking. It'd probably sound better with a pick. Um, so I'll grab my pick. You don't have to. It'll just be a, maybe a little bit cleaner. So we have that little pickup. I'm pulling off two to open on the fifth string, and then the sixth string too. And then we go to a G chord. I'm doing six, down, up, miss, up. So hitting the sixth string on the G chord, six, down, up, miss the down, and then an up. Six, down, up, miss, up. And if you're a beginner, you might think like, well, why are you missing it if that's not the beat? You, you want this always to be happening because that's how you keep your rhythm and that's how you build up your ability to play quickly, but on time, on time quickly. So, so always be doing that. Don't skip those misses thinking you can just do a down and a down. You always want, want that idea in there. So let's keep going. Uh, from, I'll just play it through from the top again. Pick, down, up, miss, up. And then we hammer, open the two. Or you can play both of them. It doesn't really matter if you pick both. Miss up, down, down, down. And then it's a C chord. After I do that open two on the fifth string, I'm playing a C chord. I lied. No C chord. No C chord. We'll just do single notes. So it's third fret on the fifth string. Then I'm hammering on open two on the fourth string. And then open again. So that we have open to two and then open. Hammer on open two. Play it open on the fourth string. A G chord, I'm just doing that top note, down, up, so from 33, 6, down, up, miss, up, 1, 2, 3, hammer, open, down, up, more time, miss, up, 1, 2, 3, hammer, open, down, up, and we'll keep going, here we go to the C chord, so we hammer 2 to 3, and then I put, I'll just put the whole C chord down, down, Hammer down up, miss down up. Hammer and four and, and then we have this cool little one. Hammering open to two on the fourth string. Open on the third. Open on the fourth. And then just from a G chord, just the top three. Measure 32, the pickup, three, four. Pick, down, up, miss, up, down, down, down. Hammer, open, down, up, down, up, miss, down, up, hammer. Really just pretty and satisfying, to me at least. And to you as well, because I know you like towns, and that's why we're here learning towns together. <laughs> All right, here's the song, flow, and then we'll do some run-throughs together. We have the intro, which only happens once in the song, and that's it, right? You got that, the four bars of the, or the eight bars of the intro, it repeats, and that little transition. And then the rest of the tune is simply verse, verse, then there's a verse, chords, but it's instrumental. Then there's a verse again, and then another instrumental verse, 
And then the final verse is him repeating the first one. And that's the whole song. There's a little tag at the end of the verse. I didn't even tab it out because it's just, he's singing over the, the ending a little bit more. Usually he leaves it bare, but he's just singing over that ending longer and it just ends on a G chord. But we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So that's it. It's one of these songs where it's just verse, 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 verse. I guess you could call the end of the verse a chorus, but I'm hearing it as like one continual thing, at least in my mind, that's how I frame it. So let's grab our tab, mikesmusicmethod.com. It's free, nothing behind a paywall, remember? And if you believe in the value for value model, if I'm giving you value, give some back. I won't give you a lengthy pitch here, but you know what to do. Please support this channel. Thank you. All right, um, here we go. I got my tab out. You should have your tab out. My lyrics are buried somewhere, um, but now I have them. So let's go through this. We got our intro, two, three, four... Do that. Well, we'll keep going. We'll do a bunch of run throughs. So that repeats three, four, one, two, three, four. Dances like a diamond shines, tells me lies and love to bleed. I'm just going to do that substitute because I like it so much better. Her rage, her rage is always 22. go to the second verse let's just do it again from the verse remember that beginning of the verse I always repeat so measure 11 I don't know these words so two I'll do it even slower this time one two three four play a blue and wailing song da -da -da melody my guitar three four my guitar sings the rhythm's fine All right, baby's here. Pew! Outfit change. All right, let's do the verse even slower this time. And this is pretty much the whole song, right? So we're going to go really slow here from measure 11. Two, three, four... Sub one again, so thirty. Do sorry, three, four. Boo, 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 do, do, boo, do. I butchered that, didn't I? From thirty, sorry, three, four. Da, 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 da. Then seventeen. Ba, da, ba, 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 ba. Do, do, So how I tag that vocal there, so that doesn't happen that time, right? There's another verse, another instrumental verse, another verse. But the last time, that's what he does. He sings on those CG. So go back to 20. Three, four. Bum, bum, bum. 
so 122 right now. <laughs> Sorry, I totally bought you, but butchering this. Let's take it from 20, and I'll show you how he tags all that. Sorry. Let's go from 20, and I'll show you how he tags all that. Listen, and you'll know what I mean. He's just tags that same lyric again and again, C slash G, G, C slash G, G, and then he finally ends it on the G. And that is the whole tune. There you have it. As always, give yourself a pat on the back and um, go play it for someone. See you next week. Comment below. Let me know if there's anything I can do to improve these videos. Let me know what songs you would like me to tackle next.